Slow Math Humans, we're going to do 2.5 today. We're going to be talking about causation and correlation. So our objectives are that we're going to talk about correlation, causation, and then we'll talk about scatter plots. So I've pre-written a bunch of our things today because we have a lot of heavy writing. So just wanted to try to keep our video short. So the first thing that I want to talk about is a correlation. A correlation is a relationship between two variables. So maybe we could make a correlation between if it's sunny outside, it's not raining, unless we live in Arizona, okay? So if two variables, two things, are correlated, then when one changes, the other is going to change, okay? So here are some examples of correlation, all right? If your wingspan which is your fingertip to your fingertip, we say that your wingspan is equal to your height. So some entertaining things is if your wingspan is longer than your height, so greater than your height, kind of entertaining, a little bit of levity, then we say you have ape syndrome. I actually have a theory that, because this would be me, my wingspan is longer than my height, even though I'm short, I have really long arms, to have ape syndrome. But I also think that might correlate to the sport that you choose. Basketball, ball sports, tennis, racquetball, um, or swimmers, because our arms are longer than we are tall. Alrighty, the next one is kind of silly. Your garlic consumption means that no vampires will come around, okay? Another correlation could be if you measure from your elbow to your fingertip, that's going to be approximately the same size as your shoe size. So those are correlations, things, two variables, two different things that are related, okay? The next thing that we want to talk about is causation. And causation is different than correlation because causation says one variable causes a change in another variable, okay? So sometimes we like to make relationships between correlation and causation, but you need to be very careful because causation means that one variable causes a change, okay? <clears throat> so a statement that you will hear a lot in statistics is that you have to be very careful. Just because two variables correlate, it does not necessarily mean that they're going to cause causation. Alrighty, so the next thing that I have for us, I lied, where's my example, is going to be a graph, and these are in your book, but they show the relationships and talk about types of correlation. So correlation, if we do a scatter plot, and that's what these are, and we'll talk about these at the end of the video, but a scatter plot shows a relationship and it shows a correlation. So if you look at the general slope, okay, it would seem that this is a positive slope and a positive slope and a positive slope. Because if you imagine kind of drawing a line through the data, right, it would appear that it has a positive slope. So then we would say that it is a positive, I'll write it out, positive correlation. Okay, and then we can add extra adjectives. You can't see this, but this one says it's a moderate. This one says that it is strong. And this one says that it is perfect. Okay. I might have not have called this one a moderate. I might have called it a weak, W-E-A-K, who can't write, meaning that the dots are close to my line, but not exactly on it. This is stronger, and then this is perfect because all of the dots are on the line. On the other hand, notice that for these guys, if I kind of draw a line through the data, notice that this one has a negative slope, and we might call this a weak correlation or a moderate, depending on how generous you are. This one is my favorite. It is no correlation, 
and this one reminds me of a shotgun pattern. So when you shoot a shotgun, my husband is a bird hunter, so when you shoot a shotgun pattern, it creates really no pattern at all. Okay, and then this one is what's called nonlinear. So just because we have a set of data, it doesn't mean that they're all going to be linear. Sometimes they could be nonlinear. All right, so the next thing I have for us are some examples. Let me get my pages turned over. And we're going to talk about correlation versus causation. So at the top I'm going to write correlation and then versus causation. Because remember, just because two things are correlated doesn't necessarily mean that they are causes for one another. So the first one says there's a correlation between the measure of your wrist and the measure of your waist. So then a question that I would ask is, does that mean that my wrist measurement causes my waist to grow? Which is entertaining because it's hard to make the size of your wrist change possible, but it's harder to make that happen than it is to make the size of your waist grow, okay? So for example number two, they're trying to make a correlation between the homeless population and crime rate. So the homeless population and the crime rate might be correlated. Both tend to either be high or low in the same area. But then I would ask you to consider, is it fair to say that the homeless populations cause crime, okay? So there's all kinds of interesting studies on this, and so you have to be careful about making assumptions. Just because two things are correlated doesn't necessarily mean that they are causation, meaning that one might not cause the other, okay? So the next thing I have is a statement, it's very important, so to determine causation, so cause, it means that you need experimental data, not an observational study, because an observational study could miss some of the details that cause a potential relationship, so you need to remember that causation can only be proven with experimental data not observational data, okay? So we have another couple of examples. This one's kind of entertaining. So when investigating the cause of crime in New York City during the 80s, lots of movies have been made about this, and they were trying to clean up the city. An academic foundation, so an academic, meaning somebody that has some qualities of a valid study found a strong correlation between the number of serious crimes committed and the amount of ice cream sold by street vendors. So I would say, is there causation? I would probably say no. So it's probably a coincidence. Uh-oh, N-C-I-D-E-N-C-E. -E. Maybe that's the right way to spell that word. It's a coincidence that the amount of ice cream sold by street vendors was correlated to the serious crimes committed in New York, okay? The last one that I have of these is also entertaining. The number of Nobel Prizes won by a country correlates with the per capita chocolate consumption. So again, are we gonna, we're gonna ask the question, is there causation? Does the amount of chocolate consumed actually cause the number of, of Nobel Prizes to increase? Probably not. Okay, so you always want to think about could the two variables be causes or are they just related or correlated? All right, the next thing that we are going to talk about is a scatter plot. 
So for a scatter plot, there's a couple of things that you need to do. And if you remember back in the beginning of our notes, it's going to be a graph. It's going to have an x-axis, which is your independent variable. And remember, an independent variable is something that you cannot change. I'll write that on here, cannot change. Time is a great example of an independent variable. And then this is going to be the dependent variable, meaning that whatever happens to this influences what happens to this. So as you get ready to create a scatter plot, you're going to choose which variable is the independent and the dependent variable. Okay? And so you really need to consider what can I not change, and then that's going to be the independent variable. Okay? The next thing that you have to decide is what scale you're going to use. And I actually have an interesting example to show you the effects of changing scale. The next one that we were going to do is we're going to plot points from the data. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to label everything. We're going to give it a title. We're going to make sure that we include units. And then the other thing that we want to do is we want to start each axis at zero. And remember, that's one of the ways that we can change the effects of a graph by changing where we start our data. Okay? So, and then after we have a scatter plot, then we are going to critique, meaning that we're going to talk about does it have correlation? Is it a strong, weak, or no correlation? And then we're going to talk about whether it's a positive or a negative correlation. So I'm going to bring in a set of data. So here's a set of data. So we have the life expectancy and the fertility rate of different women in different countries. So they chose these different countries. Here's their life expectancy. And notice that they've told you it's in years. And then the fertility rate, which means the number of children that each female had. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to graph this information and we're going to create a scatter plot. So we're going to say that the independent variable is going to be the number of children, okay, because we're hoping to show a relationship between how long somebody lives based on how many children they have in these particular countries, and so the, the dependent variable is going to be the life expectancy. So you have to talk yourself through your data. What relationship am I trying to choose, and how do I want to show a relationship? So I'm actually going to show you two different versions of the same graph. Sorry, I had to bend over and get my paper off the floor. Okay. So here's the first one. And again, I pulled these out of your book, so let's talk about the scatter plot. So here's the new, sorry, the independent variable. So this was my number of children, so it went up to four. And then this was my life expectancy. Notice that both axes start at zero, okay? Notice that both axes are labeled, and notice that both include the units. And then I have um, a title. So if we look at the data, it appears that it has a slight negative correlation. And I would say maybe it is a weak correlation. There's not a lot of data points. But the thing that's really interesting, and this is that funky graph thing that we've talked about before, this is the exact same set of data. So notice that my x-axis, my my deep independent variable, sorry, bad math, I, it now goes from 0 to 10. And so some of these data points have been globbed together because I only go up to 4. But by going up to 10, I didn't change the y-axis. 
I can see more of the data points. And so then I can see potentially that it still has a negative correlation. We'll talk about the correlation in a moment. But now it looks like there's a strong correlation. So what the second graph is implying is that your life expectancy, um, E-C-T-A-N-C-Y, is going to go down as the number of children go up. Okay, and so that's what this graph seems to say, is that the life expectancy of the mom is going to go down as the number of children goes up. But again, this is where we want to be careful about making inferences about causation. Okay, does the number of children mean that I'm not going to live as long? Maybe, maybe not. And so we would have to do some experimental data to be able to prove that point. Remember that there could be lots of other mitigating factors, meaning that it's not necessarily about the number of children that you have. It could be about food sources. It could be about medical sources. So there's lots of things that could determine a decrease in life expectancy that may or may not be related to the number of children that you have. So remember that causation is really hard to show, and to be able to show that, I would want to have some experimental data. Okay? Alrighty, that is it for today. I will see you soon.